Hey everyone, Eric Thompson here, and I hope that you are doing well. Welcome back to the channel. This evening, as we consider number 73 on the AFI Top 100, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid 1969, Paul Newman, Robert Redford, a smash hit. Uh, $7 million in the budget, over $100 million in profit. That's good news all around. <laughs> okay, uh, of course, perhaps you're familiar with the story of uh, Bush Cassidy and his sidekick, the Sundance Kid. Uh, definitely one of the tales of the Wild West that continue to live on. And this story is simply a retelling of, uh, of that story of Bush Cassidy and their adventures in the West, and then uh, some concern <laughs> for their lives, and they're fleeing to Bolivia, and uh, and then you know what happens. <laughs> if you don't know, a great reason to watch the movie. We've talked already, or perhaps you've been if you've been following this series. I, I just want to double check. I don't want to get my numbers wrong. A little study, excuse me. It's still awfully warm. It's just about 2 o'clock in the morning. It's still 80 degrees. <laughs> um, we've already considered, if you recall, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, the Wild Bunch, okay? Uh, so we've gone through, you know, one uh, Western, and here is number two, and there are still, hold oh, on, three or four more to go on the AFI Top 100. And so what is it? about all these westerns <laughs> that earn them a place on the top 100. Well, of course, you know, for an American Film Institute countdown, for an American Film Institute at all, the western must be honored and revered, and perhaps more than it deserves. But here we have something special, okay? It is the stereotypical um, western tale Revenge, bandits, long, long chase sequences. <laughs> the whole story arc, of course, is just really a, a, a revenge chase against the bad guys, who in this case are good guys, which is also typical of the American Western archetype. <laughs> okay? Um, and also, of course, in the American Western, for whatever reason, they just did not skip around with stars when it came to so many of these Western films. And again, you have Paul Newman and Robert Redford, Catherine Ross, of course, the incredible Catherine Ross, and the three of them, you know, Titanic, you know, huge stars at the time. Um, and so we're meant to, you know, believe that these stories have some weight, and thus for so long, the American film society, the whole American film culture, has put emphasis and importance on Western films. Now there are a lot of Westerns, and some may in fact be better than this one. Um, I really liked it. And I, I, I think, and I, that's not why I think it should be on the 400, <laughs> of course. Um, but, let's see, I gotta find this one real quick. Um, but I, I do believe it has quite a bit of merit for us. Um, again, because it even though it falls into such a strong archetype, a typical uh, sort of, you know, Western film, the look into the lives of these two fellas is is unique, I feel. And, of course, their incredible delivery and performance is remarkable. And some of the best writing in the film, and also some of the, <laughs> the worst writing, maybe, comes in those dialogues when... They hate each other and they love each other and it goes back and forth. I know one thing that um, kind of took me for a ride was uh, uh, B.J. Thomas's Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, or Burt Backrack, excuse me, covered by uh, B.J. Thomas. And uh, I mean, Burt Backrack, who composed the score for the film, but you know, in a Western, and then to hear this love song, this 60s love song kind of. <laughs> dropped in was distracting for me along with some other contemporary music to the time. Not that the music was bad, great music, but just a little distracting. And in case you've not seen the film or perhaps you've seen other westerns like this, 
you know, 75% of it is just a big chase scene. And that's exciting, but it's tiresome, right? It's kind of like the, the Hobbit, the most recent film, The Hobbit. Um, someone said it very well. They said, if you like hiking and monsters, you'll like this, this movie. Because it seems like it's just a lot of hiking with monster fights in between. And that's what this movie kind of feels like, too, at times. That um, it's just a lot of running from bad guys and then hanging out and talking and running from bad guys and hanging out and talking and then moving somewhere else and then running from bad guys and hanging out and talking and maybe a bank robbery in between. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but of course, as was the case with the Wild Bunch and as will be the case with many of the other Westerns we're going to see on the top 100, including one very important one uh, that's to come. This film remains relevant for today because of its influence on uh, the Western cinema, all right? This is, of course, an art form that we see somewhat decreased during our modern time. Um, there just not have been a lot of, what one would say, better Westerns out recently. I have actually quite a few on the shelf back there that were okay. 310 to Yuma, Appaloosa, Seraphim Falls. But, of course, then we can look at a, a, a real modern classic like True Grit and... Wow, I mean, based on a Western classic, and what an amazing reimagining of that story, full of uh, all the grandeur and excitement of the original, but full of its own energy and uniqueness. God, I want to watch it real soon. <laughs> this makes me want to watch it real bad. Um, and so, of course, you know, Butch Cassidy uh, remains relevant, and because, unlike so many of the other, other films I've seen so far. It is uh, a piece of nonfiction, more or less. And so, through that, a little extra weight is carried, okay? And really, I, I don't think we've seen a lot of nonfiction so far. I mean, it's, you know, maybe the Titanic, I guess. But you know what I mean? You know what I mean. Let's get on to it. Uh, you see the movie, and you realize these guys are just on the road the whole time, going as fast as they can, as long as they can, as often as they can. That's the way they live, you know. Even before um, they're being chased by whatever his name is, the, <laughs> that business owner, the, the, the tycoon, before they're being chased by his posse, you know, everything they do is about where are we going next, what are we doing next, and there's an uneasiness, both in the tempo of the movie, but in the characters when there's a lull in the action. And among other things, I thought about that in light of the life that so many of us lead. And how many times, I'm so sorry, where's my little, uh, should I have to do that on camera, but you gotta do it. <clears throat> um, the allergies are awful, they're real bad. But anyway, how many times do we hear someone say, I'm just too busy, or I'm sorry I can't, I have too many things going on, or whatever it is. It seems like I'm hearing this more and more, and disturbingly so from people who are younger and younger. And, uh, gold the, the the pace at which people are living their lives is just like these bandits. People live their lives as if they are being chased by, what, time, death, responsibilities? I don't know. Um, on one hand, and especially in the sense of Christian spirituality, there's a real truth here. And that's a lot of what Jesus tries to communicate in the gospel message. Look, I'm coming back soon, so don't, don't sit around. You know, Even as he, uh, when he ascended into heaven, you know, the angels appeared to the disciples and said, Why are you standing around? <laughs> Get to work, you know, even moments after Jesus had ascended into heaven. And so there is that sense of urgency, okay, um, in which God's Spirit is prompting us and urging us to work diligently, quickly for the kingdom, to bring more people into fellowship with Jesus before he returns. But there's also this sense of busyness. Where's the balance? Well, there's a real neat passage from the book of Ecclesiastes, which is not known for a lot. Unfortunately, uh, besides that, uh, the famous passage which the birds made a very popular song. 
But this is kind of a neat passage that I think touches on this idea of living busy, but making that busyness count. You know, uh, not living at a breakneck, reckless speed like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid do. But uh, and by that I mean, you know, where they're just bouncing from one circumstance to the other, to the other, to the other. There's no real structure. They're just going with this uncontrollable, rapid flow that you know bangs them around their existence. But here we have a chance to you know, have some meaning, meaning in our hectic lifestyle. And this is what it says, Ecclesiastes 9, verse 10 um, through 12. Let me get a drink of water here. Excuse me. Whatever your hand finds to do, whatever you find to do, do it with all your might. For there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol where you are going. <laughs> now, or simply said, if you're going to do it, you better do it now. Because in hell, there's not doing anything. <laughs> there's nothing to do. Um, this is a this is a word of warning, right? We are not meant to believe that we are all just going to hell to do nothing. Okay, don't don't take it that way. Verse eleven. I saw again under the sun that the race, the race of life, whatever it is, you know, is not to the swift, and the battle is not to the warriors, and neither is bread to the wise, nor wealth to the discerning, nor favor to men of ability. For time and chance overtake them all, sure enough. You know. Moreover, man does not know his time. Like fish caught in a treacherous net and birds trapped in a snare, so the sons of men are ensnared at an evil time when it suddenly falls on them. This is, of course, a, a, a word of caution, of judgment, okay? But there's also a, an incredible grace in this. We don't know when God will summon us to himself. We don't know when death will take us for time and chance or we'll take them all. We, we simply don't. Of course, even people asked Jesus when he would come back, you know, when the kingdom of God would be established on earth. And even Jesus said, look, only the Father knows. Only God knows. And so... Even if we live at this breakneck speed, this incredible hasty speed, accomplishing so much, or hopefully, hopefully accomplishing so much, we remember these important words, that there is value in that. There is value in diligence and in working hard, okay? But we make our work, whatever it is, meaningful by really meaning it, by not going through the motions, okay? That's the struggle that I have when I watch a movie like this and I see, excuse me, you know, Butch and the Sundance Kid just uh, seemingly getting thrown around by life. They're not taking control of their circumstance and living with a real intention and an intentionality for themselves, especially as they share so much life together. And so for us, hopefully, even though I'm sure so many of us would call ourselves busy or busier than the rest, or busier than normal, busier than we'd like to be, hopefully we can find that focus in our day to remember that if we're going to do it, we better do it now. But why? What's that end goal? What's that achievement that we're looking for? And hopefully, in our lives, it's to love one another and to serve God and to serve other people through the love of God. Unlike bandits, who of course are living only for themselves, and who are driving these, themselves at these, these frantic paces just for their own glory. But indeed, dear friends, we can choose to live for Jesus Christ and for the love of God and for the love of each other to hopefully, hopefully, make this world better than it is now. At least that's what I hope we can all look to achieve. That's number 73. Uh, was it number 74? I, I always have to check. Not good with numbers. And there's a lot of numbers in this one. Number 73, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Number 72, The Shawshank Redemption coming very soon. An incredible, incredible movie. Wow. 
And we're probably going to talk about freedom, because that just seems just a natural <laughs> a point of reflection there. A little longer than I cared to on this review, and I'm sorry as well for how long the Silence of the Lambs review was. I, you know, not many people watch that. So for what it's worth, there it is, number 73, <laughs> Butch Gansity and the Sundance Kid. Thank you truly, friends, for watching. Hey, like and subscribe to the channel if you care to. I appreciate it. And welcome to uh, all the new subscribers and, and to my dear friend Haley, who I know just subscribed to the channel. And Haley, I appreciate you coming by. And I know that she likes uh, country films and country western films. And so here you go. Here's a, one of many that are on the AFI Top 100. All right. It's time to, uh, to be about it, my friends. But we'll see you soon indeed. Thanks so much.